Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Hello. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Go to Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Most sets of scriptures, again, will have these. Do you see that? Right there? That's what I'm talking about, right there. Okay, find, uh, find that in your set of scriptures. If your uh, set of scriptures does not have that, Mem is verses 97 on to verse 104. Okay? Mem. Oh, how love I thy law. It is the meditation, it is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. And who are our enemies? Those of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism and her army in the Jesuit order. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. The teachers uh, in the Jesuit schools today, even in the so-called Christian schools, have to have approved curriculum. Okay? They usually do to have this homeschool thing. Unless you just take them out of there and just completely, you know, but here in America, that's dependent upon the state in which you live. I know, for example, in Indiana that um, there's quite some harsh punishments for people who uh, don't send their children to the public school system. And you got to remember, um, the school system, education today, is in the hand of the Jesuit order. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to be looking at some resources today. Um, to demonstrate this on to you, okay? You want an education, dear friend? Read the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. And if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and the living God, you know a new creature, the spirit of truth, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will guide you into all truth. Okay? But where it says here, I have more understanding than all my teachers, Understanding to depart from evil. You look at the people, the teachers in the modern school system today. What are they teaching the, kid, the kids? Hmm? Evolution. The religion of evolution. They're also teaching them the religion of the poison crown. Okay? Both of which you have to have faith in order for anything to work for you. Okay? You have to have faith in the religion of evolution. You have to have faith in the religion of the pro, a poison crown. Okay? You have to have faith in it. It's a religion. Both of them are a religion. Isn't that interesting? And those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who has God within them, that circumcision made without hands. I have more understanding than all my teachers, which are Jesuits. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. What's being implied there is that the ancients did not. In that verse right there, okay, the ones who are teaching, the ones who are ancient, in context here in Mem, they kept not his precepts. Uh, they did not love his law. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Understanding. Wisdom is to fear the Lord and understanding is to depart from evil. Okay? I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. 
Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. I hate evolution. I hate the religion of the poison crown. I hate Catholicism. I hate easy believism. Okay? I hate the cultic mindset of devoted followers of a man. I hate every false way. And you as the church of the living God, you are supposed to do so too. Okay? But it says right here, I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Hold, thy, hold your place here. Some familiar verses and go to Luke. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 21. Or excuse me, not 21. Luke chapter 24. <clears throat> Verses 44. On to verse 48 in Luke chapter 24. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. The Lord opened up their understanding to understand the scriptures. The spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, he will teach you the scriptures. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Okay? And said unto them, Thus it is written, And thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, to the Jew first. And ye are witnesses of these things. Okay? And, and look over here. At verse 27, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The Spirit of truth is going to lead you into all truth. Our God himself, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, he is going to lead you and guide you into all truth. Okay? Because it is the spirit that beareth witness to these things. Brother. What spirit do you have? That's the question. That is the question. That's the $64,000 question, dear friends. And of course, John 17, verse 17. Okay? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The authorized version of the scriptures. And here in Psalm 119, man, it says, Oh, how love I thy law, it is, the it is my meditation all the day. And verse 104 in Mem, Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Oh, no. It's actually pretty, pretty simple. Go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. One second. Sorry about that. Ephesians chapter 4. Beginning at verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, 
to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Taught by Jesus. And over there in Luke, we see that he opened their understanding that they may, may uh, understand the scriptures. Hmm. And the Holy Ghost, when he has come, he will guide the spirit of truth. When he has come, he will guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. You know, when you read the scriptures as the church of the living God, the author is present. Okay? Even for you lost devils, the author is present when you're reading the scriptures. Granted, you are not of his, but um, the author is present when you're reading the scriptures. And unless you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, unless you belong to him, this is going to be just a book to you. And that's something. Back to Psalm 119. Go to Aen. Psalm 119, Aen. Which is uh, verses 121 onto 128. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. <laughs> mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy. And teach me thy statutes. Do you want to know the truth? Seek the Lord. And see, you have to believe that he is, number one, God. And number two, um, that he is a rewarder of them who seek him diligently. Okay? I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Understanding. Depart from evil that you may know his testimonies. You're not going to be able to really get a grasp of his testimonies if you are of the church of the living God, living in sin and living in pride and worshiping men. Are you? Are you? It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Look at that verse. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. The world tells us to do something that's in contradiction with the scriptures. Um, Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. How much do the scriptures mean to you? How much does the word of God mean to you? Hmm? Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Huh? And you're a Christian? And you're going to fall for the world's trappings and their system? What, is the, what are the scriptures worth to you? They say one thing, and God says something else. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What about you? What about you? Hmm? And Psalm 119, Chresh. Psalm 119, Chresh. Verses 153 under verse 160. Very neat for us today. Consider my affliction, mine affliction, and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken, make alive, thank you, brother. Quicken me according to thy word. Salvation is far from the wicked. 
And it ain't it ever. For they seek not thy statutes. No, they seek their heart, that their heart may discover itself. That's what they're seeking. They're seeking loopholes on how to live in sin. Okay? They're seeking for aha moments, trying to catch people. They're wicked. That's all they do. And we're going to look at why these people, I mean, number one, we know that they have not the Spirit of God in them. Therefore, they are spiritually discerned, because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord, because they are foolishness unto him. Okay? Just like all these devils. They, they can't teach, because they are not saved, number one. But we're going to look at a little bit more of a, a, a reason why these people are incapable of teaching anything. Okay? Let's continue this. Verse 156. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies. Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. And boy, they, uh, these enemies of ours come out from all directions, don't they? Don't they? And from areas where you least expect it, too. And areas that you don't want them to come from. Uh, you know, it gives, you, it gives me no pleasure to doubt people um, who I thought were of the church of the living God. It gives me no pleasure at all to do that. But what's the difference? What is the difference between someone who is of the church of the living God and totally messed up and someone who is just has some religiosity? What's the difference? Chastisement is the difference. But see, you and I only see what we're allowed to see on a camera, aren't we? Think about that. Think about that now. A lot of these tough guys can be tough sitting behind a, a veil of plastic with their keyboards. And you're so tough. Yeah. But see, there are things we do not see. You don't see the chastisement that the Lord puts me through. <laughs> okay? You don't see when my pride gets out of the way, uh, gets out of control, and my thorn in the flesh starts acting up and brings me to my knees and pleading for mercy. You don't see that, okay? There ought to be some transparency between us. There ought to be. But see, we don't really know what goes on in the background with all the brethren, do we? Do we? Something to keep in mind. But see, okay, if someone is of the church of the living God and just totally messed up, that chastening is going to produce a visible effect in one way or another. Like it has been said unto me, there's a difference in you, Brad, you've changed. Again, yeah, because I almost died. I, I addressed this in the previous video. Okay? That changes things. That, that gives you a little bit more. That gave me a little bit more of a, okay. You know, I know what it says, both not thyself of tomorrow, of the morrow. Like in, um, excuse me, Pro, uh, Proverbs 27, the proverb for today. And how uh, it says in James, you know, boast not of tomorrow. Okay? We know that. But when we come face to face with actual dying, that, that, like I said, that puts things in perspective. Chastening of someone of the church of the living God, even if they are in horrendous error, ought to produce at least something visible for the church of the living God to see. And if it is not there, that is when you need to start questioning things. And if it continues without any chastisement, then you really begin need to start questioning things. Know what I mean? Verse 156 in Resh. 
Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. Oh yeah, we have many persecutors and many enemies. That's all they can do. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. <laughs> Keep smiling, buddy. Yeah, that's all you can do. This is a joke to you guys. Yeah. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved, because they kept not thy word. Those of you who call are, are King James Bible believing Christians, um, how are you doing the keeping thy word? His word. Hmm? How are you at that? Are you so quick to deflect onto others what you yourself don't? Uh, yeah. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Hmm. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 1, verses 1 under verse 11. The words of the preacher. This is King Solomon. This is King Solomon. This is his diary, if you will. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. Hmm? And what about, uh, and what about the, uh, what about where it says here in uh, Proverbs 30? Yes. Verses 11 on to verse oh, 17. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. And they're being trained, the, this generation now, are being trained by these easy believism idiot devils. The devils, okay? They're being trained by these people. And this is what they're producing. This, Mr. Smiley Canadian, this is what you are producing. This is your, this is what you're producing. Uh, a generation that doth not bless their mother and curse their father. That's what you're doing. Good for you. <laughs> Good luck at the great white throne there, buddy boy. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Survival of the fittest. Evolutionary religion being taught in the schools today. The horse leech hath two daughters crying, give, give. It's all about them. Because you teach them that you're, sta you're saved by what you do. God is a distant fuzzy thing. Okay? You are your own God because you save yourself. See? Evolution and the easy believe is a mindset. Go figure. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, dead in trespasses and sins. No fruit. The earth that is not filled with water, chapped. No water is uh, coming out of their belly. No living water. And the fire that saith not enough. A fire proceeds out of their mouth and they kindle coals. That's all they do. They're agitators. That's it. That's it. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey the obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagle shall eat it. Hmm. Ecclesiastes 1, chapter 5. 
The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There is no new thing under the sun. No new thing under the sun. In the scriptures it talks about new gods springing up new that they knew not, yes. But those new gods come from that old serpent, the devil, Satan. So yes, new gods spring up, little g of course, but they their source is that old serpent, the devil and Satan. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. What about what about cell phone? That's a form of communication. What about these computers? form of communication and also a, 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 way, a method of learning. What about cars? A form of transportation. Boats? A form of transportation. These pharmacaea drugs. Poison from witch doctors, from sorcerers. Nothing new under the sun. Skyscrapers, huh? Yeah, let us build us a tower that reacheth unto heaven. There's nothing new under the sun. Evolution? <laughs> Yea, hath God said, there's nothing new under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It hath been already of old time, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, which was before us. He was the anointed cherub, you know, for us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. You know, you people who love your entertainment and love the things of the world, can you tell me who won the Oscar ten years ago? Who was the Super Bowl champion? of about five years ago. Hmm. What was the hit song in America three years ago? Do you remember what you did yesterday? <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 6. You know, you ought to spend some quality time in the book of Ecclesiastes. I go through the book of Ecclesiastes once a month. There are other brethren who go through it twice a month, praise the Lord. But, you know, just very similar to Jeremiah, which is very pertinent and meet for today, so is what Ecclesiastes addresses. The vanity of a life without God and focus on the things of the world. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Here's what we're getting at. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of desire. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. You know, it's better for your eyes to look around than what? Than the wandering of desire. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of desire. Excuse me. It's better to see a, a beautiful sunset to have a wandering eye, to look at things that you ought not to. Therefore, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. See? This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. What happens when your eye wanders? 
Hmm? What happens when your eye wanders from the scriptures and gets focused on the things out there? That which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. And that's something you easily believe as some devils have to really remember. Uh, neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. Uh, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is a lot mightier than you, and he laughs at your joke of your salvation because you just believe. But see that? That which hath been is named already and it is known that it is man. Man. From dust thou art unto dust thou shalt return. Man at his best state is altogether vanity. At your best, buddy boy, you're vanity. At my best, I'm vanity. That which hath been is named already, and it is, and it is known that it is man. Hmm. Romans chapter 8, 20 on to verse 22. Romans chapter 8, verses 20 on to verse 22. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. We're the creature. We're not the creator. You, you, I hope you know that, right? You. you. You think you're the creator because you're saving yourself with your belief. Brilliant. Yeah. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. Everything is groaning. Everything is looking for... Every, a lot of people are looking for a Savior. But see, you offer them a Savior, the Savior, excuse me, of the Scriptures. They don't want that. No, they want your Savior there, smiley boy from Canada. They want your Savior. The one who doesn't judge, the one who has no standards, no conditions, just you walking along, all of a sudden and you accept it. Yeah. You're giving the people what they want. Bravo, and I hope your rewards in hell are very bountiful for you. Okay? But the people don't want the Jesus of the Scriptures. They want that man of sin, the son of perdition. But a lot of people are groaning, looking for a savior. And of course, I believe that Trump, for America, he's going to temporarily fill that void for uh, the Americans looking for a great white knight, you know, a savior. Uh, I'm going to put some links in the description box um, that deal with the um, Golden Dawn and also the Freemasons, which are run by the Jesuits, of course. But uh, yeah, yeah. And like, like I've said before in previous videos, I believe that uh, as the Jesuits did with Napoleon, that's exactly what they're going to do with Donald Trump. You watch. You watch. You watch. If I were a betting man, i bet you ten bucks. You watch. You watch what they're going to do with Trump here in America. You watch. You watch. Ecclesiastes, now go back there to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Verses 6 on to verse 14. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. Therefore the whole, uh, whole of creation groan. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. 
Hmm. Uh, no man hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. You do not save yourself. Okay? People, please, wake up to this. You do not save yourself by your belief. It's by grace through faith. Okay? And, come on, my enemies, you could even repeat this just like I do. What do I teach that has to be there? Right? Rather, what does the scriptures teach? Brokenness and contrition and the fear of the Lord. And in fear of the Lord, you're going to call upon the name of the Lord. And may he save you. That's what the scriptures teach as pertaining to salvation in this dispensation. That's what I teach as far as that. Okay? So, you have no power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Okay? You don't save yourself. Neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. If the Lord doesn't want you to live, you ain't going to live. The fact that you have today is His mercy. Okay? You're not going to get away from God. And you're not going to get away from the God of all things. So you don't save yourself. You, can't re uh, you don't have power over the Spirit to retain the Spirit. Okay? It is a gift. You don't have power in the day of death because you can try all day. If the Lord wants you to die, you're going to die. Okay? Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. You may be getting away with doing wicked things, but at the end, you're going to be given account for it at the great white throne of judgment. You're not getting away from it. All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the, under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. Like um, bowing to men. Look at that. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. You roll that around in your head a little bit. And I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone, yes, who dance and struts his stuff upon the stage to be heard of no more. It is the tale told of an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy. Came from the place of the holy? Hmm. And they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This also is vanity. A good name is rather to be chosen than precious uh, than jewels and precious silver or something like that. I just bradized that, excuse me. The name of the wicked will rot. Because these people is like, where, where is your God? God doesn't see. All you devils, uh, keyboard warriors, you know, full of sound of fury, signifying nothing. Brave warriors hiding behind plastic. Um, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it will be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Fearing God. Fearing God. Which is a requirement for salvation. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that, that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth, happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said this also is vanity. Hmm. Look at verse 12 and verse 13. Fear. 
Fear. Therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the fear of our God, to scare the hell out of you, okay? The fear of the Lord is going to naturally, because you're terrified, the lesser calling upon the greater, you're going to call upon the name of the Lord and ask Him for His mercy and for Him to save you. Okay? Though a sinner do evil an hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before Him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are, a, which are as a shadow. Why? Because he feareth not before God. So trying to explain away how someone not having the fear of the Lord but yet calling upon his name and making excuses for him. Why, would, why are none of us surprised? Why are none of us surprised? You will not convince me that someone who has the fear of the Lord is going to utter profanity when calling upon the name of the Lord. You, you can give all your philosophical reasonings you want. Chapter and verse. Not surprised. Not surprised. And touching that very quickly, Malachi, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Set the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name, and ye say, Wherein have we despised thee? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. Hmm. But you know, there is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. And we know that these things are of man and Satan loves the things that be of men. History repeats itself. If you want to know the future, look into the past. I'll give you a really good example. Look at my nation here in America. Okay? When America uh, was founded, we had something called state sovereignty. That meant that you were a citizen of whatever state you were born in. For example, I was born in Illinois, so that would make me a citizen of Illinois. Okay? Each state had state sovereignty. Okay? There was a union, yes, a union. And yes, our government according to the Constitution. Okay? That union was set up there for protection from you Englishmen. Okay? All right? Okay? That's why the uh, uh, Second Amendment, the right to arm bears or the right to bear arms, whatever you want to say. Okay? Uh, the right to bear arms was not there with the intention of hunting. Because remember, back then, if you did not hunt, you did not eat. I mean, there were farms and crops and stuff like that, but... Hunting was not the premise of the Second Amendment. The premise of the Second Amendment was there for us to have arms to defend ourselves from foreign invaders and also from tyrannical government. And see, there were some states that exceeded or that wanted to get out of the Union around the time of the Civil War because of state sovereignty. 
Each state was its own little independent thing. Kind of like what you hear Texas wants to do, to declare their sovereignty, okay? Eric John Phelps, if uh, that 24, uh, uh, 24 7 news radio, uh, go ahead and check out some of his stuff where he talks about that. Now, granted, he believes that the American can come back again, but, <laughs> okay, and, you know, Eric John Phelps has got, you know, some of his things, but um, he, he gets into great detail about that, okay? And I recommend you look up his information on that. And also, too, um, Go ahead and get the uh, Federalist Papers, also a copy of our Constitution and the uh, Amendments and the Bill of Rights and all that stuff. Read them. Federalist Papers, by the way, are very telling about uh, how things, you know, they were, the Federalist Papers were basically the Hegelian principle here in America. Argument, counter-argument, to bring out the end result. The end justifies the means, okay? <laughs> but... Each state was independent, under a union, but independent, free. Okay? What changed that? The Civil War. The Civil War. You want to know the future? Look into the past. America, when it was founded, the states were sovereign states. Independent sovereign states. Okay? The Civil War under the guise of slavery, okay? Slavery actually does appear in the scriptures twice, okay? But the, our southern brethren here in America, they practice an unscriptural form of slavery, okay? Um, in the scriptures, being a bond servant to repay a debt, uh, to repay a debt or to be one uh, as, in, under servitude after war like you go to war and you get these guys you can make them be your servants okay those are the two types of servitude slavery that the scriptures talk about and of course those of the south did not practice that but see when you look into the slave trade thing okay you will find ties onto the freemasons who are also controlled by the Jesuit order. Look it up. Oh, how could you? Right? Because history has been rewritten. History, as the saying goes, history is written by those who kill heroes as if we need heroes. Okay? But what happened? Civil War, we're under the pretense of liberating the slaves, that was not what the Civil War was about at all. The Civil War was brought about by the Jesuits, by their cunning, by their plans. They wanted to kill as many Protestants and many, as many as, uh, of, of us Americans as they could. And to bring about the eventual 14th Commandment. Whereas before the Civil War, each state was an independent. But after the Civil War, a new creature was created. You were a citizen of the United States. Now think about this. For the Civil War here in America, these states were sovereign states. You were a citizen of whatever state you were. Each state looked after its own backyard. Okay? But now, after the Civil War and the 14th Amendment, you're a citizen of the United States. Think about that. Now think about that. Before all this stuff started, by the Jesuits, by the way, you had an illusion of being your own independent person, spirit, soul, and body. Now a war is coming because of the Jesuit order and their uh, psychological operation that they're pushing on you. And through their many um, arms, you know, here in America, it's going to be uh, Kamala Harris. And you, you Americans, my brethren in America, here's a scary thought, okay? They get rid of Smoking Joe like they've always planned on, and they officially put Kamala Harris up there. She is the acting president, whether you want to believe that or not, okay? Who's going to be the vice president? 
in order of succession? Nancy Pelosi. Ha! <laughs> That's not funny. Think about that, brethren. Think about that. Now, see, once they get rid of Smoking Joe, whether he's going to last the four years or whether they're going to boot him, it doesn't matter. Okay? The end result for us Americans as judgment allowed upon this nation by God our Father. He's allowing the Jesuits to do this for judgment. Uh, the end result is Kamala Harris. Okay? You're going to have to get over that. When they push Trump as the white knight, the savior coming back, it's the Napoleon thing. You, you, you watch. You watch. Okay? You watch. It's the Napoleon thing. They're going to use him just like they used Napoleon. And he is going to sacrifice all of you who are stupid enough to fall for. Okay? But the end result is Kamala Harris. So they're bringing a war to bring to make everyone to become a <laughs> global citizen. So if you want to know the future, you look into the past. You look into the past of America. Um, when America was a sovereign, uh, we were a collection of sovereign states, independent. But after a war... We became the United States of America. Same thing. You think you have your individual freedom from the in this world. No. Something's going to happen and you're all going to become global citizens. Think about that. Think about that. Okay? And here, plus two, uh, before the Civil War, we had rights. We had rights. But now, because of the 14th Amendment, and we are now citizens of the United States, not um, citizens of the state, sovereign state that you were born in, but no, we are now citizens of the United States. Your rights have been replaced by privileges and a, a hierarchical government has been established here in America that we have today which is fashioned after the Roman Catholic institution. Think about it people. Think about it. We have our rights? No. We have privileges. What is that in, in Catholic jargon? A dispensation from their Pope. So our rights are given to us as a dispensation from our president, our pope. And with the trading of the enemy act by, uh, what was that, uh, Roosevelt, I believe it was? Something like that. Okay, the trading with the enemy act. And we've been in a state of emergency ever since. I think it was in the 1930s or something like that. Um... We are under executive um, uh, executive powers. Your, the Constitution, it's a guideline. It means nothing. Look, look, look at what they're doing today in America. Okay? Look at it. Okay? A lot of people like to say, I have rights. No, you don't. They're a guideline. They're there, they're there for a show. Okay? Why? Because since the Civil War, America is of the United States. We have a dictator, Kamala Harris, and our rights, our privileges, dispensation given to us by a Pope. Does that sound like something you might have read in, for the future here in the scriptures? Yes, it is. You want to know what's coming? Look at the history of America, people. Think about it. But then again, when it comes to finding history, you can still find true history. But you got to remember, who wrote the history books? The, the works of those of the Church of the Living God. 
have been long before long burned and destroyed by Roman Catholicism and the Jesuits. Remember, the Jesuits' goal was the counter-reformation. And the reformers did want to reform Catholicism. I always said that uh, Martin Luther wanted it to be the German Catholic uh, Church rather than the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? And um, incidentally, I don't think Luther was a safe man either. I really don't. I really don't. I hope I'm wrong. Lord, forgive me if I am. You'll show me when I get there. But history has been changed, rewritten. By who? Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great. Or the army, the Jesuits. Satan. Because they're, you know, for example, the kids in schools, they're learning evolution. Um, creation, as according to the scriptures. Which one? Creation is not being taught in schools. I don't know if it's officially been outlawed, uh, but um, you will pay a heavy price in a public school or even in a private school um, to teach scriptural creation. That's the hands of the Jesuits. I'm going to be reading to you some from this book. George Orwell's 1984. Um, was George Orwell a Jesuit? I have no idea. I will tell you this. There ain't no way that Mr. George Orwell came up with this by himself. Uh, I believe a devil uh, inspired this in him. Okay? Okay? That's what I believe. Um, or else uh, the devil himself gave him this. Or one of the Jesuits... Uh, I truly believe, uh, wholeheartedly believe, that Orwell was at least a Freemason of the Illuminati. Can I prove that? No. But he had ties. So, people, someone doesn't come up with this and then have it happening pretty much to the T right before us. Unless, like the Jesuits are, they must have uh, confidence that their plans are going to succeed, or else they would have never have made their plans public. Why is that? Because there is a generation that doth curse their father, or doth uh, curse their father, and doth not bless their mother. And being taught by these guys. Okay. By the way, this is the book that um, this is the book uh, by Leone. Okay. This is the book that. Uh, Mr. Daniels was not mentioning to you. Okay? He was telling you, uh, you know, uh, David Daniels, it took publications. Uh, he was telling you about Leone and the story here about the Jesuits' conspiracy. But as far as I, uh, far, as far as I know, he never mentioned the book and where you can go and look, for it, look at it for yourself. But we are going to look at uh, a portion in George Orwell's 1984. Okay, several portions. Okay, uh, in chapter five in the first section, this will be on page. Is uh, we're going to be reading a section on page fifty, and all of fifty-one onto fifty-two. We're going to be reading excerpts onto page fifty-three. Okay, so pretty much the highlighted stuff. Okay, pretty much. Let me see. Okay, there you go. Pretty much the highlighted stuff is what we're going to be looking at. Okay. And also here, pretty much the highlighted stuff. Okay. Can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. That is what we are going to be looking at today thus far. And we got another part in here. Okay. Pay attention to this. And think about this. Who rewrote the history books? Have you not noticed that dictionaries are changing? Do you not know about um, uh, euphemistic language? Which is a Jesuit. That's what Jesuits do. Look at uh, these uh, easy believism devils. They change the meaning of definitions. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. While still, you know, turning. But it's from going from unbelief to belief. 
It's not repenting of your self-righteousness. No, 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 no. It's going from unbelief to belief. That's euphemistic language. Changing the name, the title or something, changing the condition to change the condition. What? No. It's euphemism. It's Jesuit. Okay? That's what Jesuits do. They redefine terms. Okay? That's what Jesuits do. Okay? Verbatim. Now think about this. Think about this. Especially too when it comes to the Bibles, which they're constantly updating. The 11th edition is the definitive edition, he said. We're getting the language into its final shape. The shape it's going to have when nobody speaks anything else. Now think about that. Think about that. What they're doing out there with the changing the terms. How dictionaries change. You know, like I've told you, take the 1828 and take a modern dictionary, lay them side by side, and compare the meanings. You'll be astonished. Okay? Look at these easy believism devils. Changing the, the scriptural meaning of words. Repentance going from unbelief to belief. Okay? Medically you know, whatever. Okay? When we've finished with it, people like you will have to learn it all over again. You think, I dare say, that our chief job is inventing new words? But not a bit. <laughs> get, get a load of this. We're destroying words. Destroying words. Scores of them. Hundreds of them. Every day. We're cutting the language down to the bone. The 11th edition won't contain a single word that will become obsolete before the year 2050. Okay? Now we're going to be skipping a little... Um, we're going to be skipping a little here and just reading the highlighted parts. It's a beautiful thing, the destruction of words. Of course, the great wastage is in the verbs and adjectives. But there are hundreds of nouns that can be got rid of as well. Think about this, people. Where'd this guy come up from this? Come up with this, huh? Huh? Is this not happening right outside your door? Sir, watch that... The television with the, the news that they're pro uh, giving you, huh? Look at these devils online. Is this not happening? Where'd this guy get this? I'll give you 50 guesses. Not from himself, that's for sure. It isn't only the synonyms. There are also the antonyms. After all, what justification is there for a word which is simply the opposite of some other words. Wow. A word contains its opposite in itself. Take good, for instance. Get a load of this. If you have a word like good, what need is there for a word like bad? Ungood. Did, did you catch that? Don't, don't say the word bad. Say rather ungood. Don't say that he's lost. Just say that he's in error. Don't say that people are stupid. Say that they have a learning disorder. You tell me. Hey, hey guys, come on. My enemies, come on. You're part of this. This is what you're doing. But I dare you to at least have the stones to admit it. What you're not. This is your. You know, your time is coming. We're our time is ending. We're going to be getting out of here. You guys are going to have be able to rule the roost with your father, the devil. Okay, you you guys are part of this. But this is what is happening now. Look at that. If you have a word like good, what need is there for a word like bad? Ungood will do just as well. <laughs> we 
we don't like to say someone died. They passed away. I, I, I'm not in sin. I'm struggling. You get the point? Euphemistic language. Changing the name of the condition, change the conditions. No! That's Jesuit. Okay? That's what Jesuits do. And that's what you are. Those of you who do this. Especially you easy believism devils. You're Jesuits. All of you. Okay. Ungood will do just as well. Better! Because it's an exact opposite. Which the other is not. Or again, if you want a stronger version of good, what sense is there in having a whole string of vague, useless, useless words like excellent and splendid and all the rest of them? Plus good covers the meaning. And double plus good if you want something stronger still. Of course, we will use these forms. Of course, we use these forms already. But the final version of new speak, there'll be nothing else. In the end, the whole notion of goodness and badness will be covered by only, note this, six words. In reality, only one word. Don't you see the beauty of that, Winston? It was B.B.'s Big Brother's idea originally, of course. He added as an afterthought. Wow, huh? Huh? Wow, huh? Now, get a load of this. Like I said, we're reading just the highlight of things. Okay? Well, well here, we're going to read this, okay? You haven't read, you haven't a real appreciation of newspeak. New speak, Winston. He said almost sadly. Even when you write, it is still thinking in old speak. You know, the old paths. I've read some of those pieces that you write in the Times occasionally. They're good enough, but they're translations. Whoa. In your heart, you'd prefer to stick to old speak. With all its vagueness and its useless shades of meaning, you don't grasp the beauty of the destruction of words. Do you know that new speak is the only language in the world whose vocabulary gets smaller every year? Ha ha ha. Come on, people! How did this guy come up with this? You tell me. He didn't. By inspiration of devils. Jesuit. Masons. Whatever. Masons are run by the Jesuits, of course. Okay? Big part. But, uh, how'd this guy come up with this? Because it's happening right now. This, 1984, is happening right now. You tell me. Do you not see the whole aim of new speak is to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible. Thought crime. Because there will be no words in which to express it. Every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word. With its meaning rigidly defined and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. Already in the 11th edition. <laughs> I, I just think about the Bibles. Okay. Dictionaries as well. But you know. We're not far from that point, but the process will still be continuing long after you and I are dead. 
every year fewer and fewer words and the range of consciousness always a little smaller. Ain't that the truth today? Yeah, knowledge will increase, right? Yeah, yeah, by dumbing down test scores and stuff like that. Yeah, lowering the standards so everybody is, you know, what was that, in the Jesuit colleges, even the ones that aren't religious? <laughs> uh, 4.0 is supposedly the highest, and people nowadays are pulling 4.0s right out of their hat, or something like that. Even now, of course, there is no reason to excuse for the committing thought crime, thinking poorly against the ruling society. It's merely a question of self-discipline, reality control, but in the end there won't be any need even for that. The revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. Censorship today, you can't say certain things. Okay? Got to come up with clever ways to say something. But still, censorship in a free society. No, our freedoms are privileges, not rights. Thanks to the Jesuit order. America is a Jesuit nation, people. But you go ahead, roll up your sleeve now, so you can get your Starbucks. Huh? So you can walk around in your Walmarts. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. New speak is ig, uh, is ingsoc, and ingsoc is new speak. He added with a sort of mystical satisfaction. Has it ever occurred to you, Winston, that by the year 2050, at the very latest, not a single human being will be alive who could understand such a conversation as we are having now? 2050, excuse me, 2050. Uh, 2030 agenda the 2030 agenda people okay by 2030 this says 2050 excuse me uh, at the very least not a single human being will be able be alive who could understand such a conversation as we are having now maybe because t by 2025 is when people are going to start dropping like flies. And here is another um, here's another portion in a uh, yellow thing that we're going to be reading. Okay. Now the proles are not human beings, he said carelessly. Those who went uh, adhere to the old way. By 2050, earlier probably, all real knowledge of old speak will have disappeared. The whole literature of the past will have been destroyed. Chaucer, Shakespeare, Milton, Byron, they'll exist only in new speak versions. Like the Pilgrim's Progress in today, updated in today's language. Even that wicked uh, Charles, uh, not Charles, um, Oswald Chambers, his utmost for his highest, in today's updated language. Get it? Shakespeare, which is a, an atrocity. Shakespeare in modern language. Hello? <laughs> God's word in the Bible in modern language. Hello? Not merely changed into something different but actually changed into something contradictory of what they used to be. Okay? <laughs> Even the literature of the party will change. Even the slogans will change. Oh, think about all the propaganda they're pre pushing on you right now about the uh, poison crown, the religion of the poison crown, and the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Have their slogans not changed already? Come on, people. Come on, people. How could you have a slogan like freedom is slavery 
when the concept of freedom has been abolished. The whole climate of thought will be different. In fact, there will be no thought as we understand it now. Orthodoxy means not thinking, not needing to think. Orthodoxy is unconsciousness. Now, I'm going to read to you a portion out of this, which really describes the Jesuit order. Remember, the aim of the Jesuit order is to rule the world by the volition of a single man. That's what Napoleon Bonaparte said, okay? Today, that single man is Arturo Sosa, the black pope, the head of the Jesuit order, the head of all Catholicism. Uh, pope Francis is subservient unto Sosa, okay? Okay? But, after we, the Church of the Living God, are resurrected, redeemed, caught up, all right? It's going to be that man of sin, the son of perdition. Let me, let's, let's read this. Now will I tell you the answer to my question. It is this. The party seeks power entirely for its own sake. The party, the Jesuits. We are not interested in the good of others. We are in interested solely in power. The Jesuit order is all about what? Power. To rule the world by the volition of a single man. Okay? Not wealth or luxury or long life or happiness. Only power. Pure power. What pure power means you will understand presently. We are different from all the oligarchies of the past in that we know what we are doing. And the Jesuits sure do. All the others, even those who resembled ourselves, were cowards and hypocrites. The German Nazis and the Russian Communists came very close to us in their methods, but they never had the courage to recognize their own motives. And both of these, uh, Nazism, Communism, brainchild of the Jesuits, okay? They pretended, perhaps, they even believed that they had seized power unwillingly and for a limited time and that just round the corner there lay a paradise where human beings would be free and equal. We are not like that. We know that no one ever seizes power with the intention of relinquishing it. Power is not a means. It is an end. The end justifies the means. Jesuit. That's what this Grider guy won't tell you. Uh, that that uh, what's his name? The now the end, not, now the end begins. Oh, I talk about the Jesuits. Yeah, but you don't finger point them. Okay. Power is not a means. It's an end. The end justifies the means. It's right there. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes a revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. The object of persecution is persecution. These devils aren't persecuting us because they have a concern for the truth and love people. No. The object of persecution is persecution. That's what they're called to do by your Jesuit masters. The object of torture is torture. The object of power is power. Now do you begin to understand me? One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes the revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. You know, we Americans, and to the enemies of mine who are really quick to bash on us Americans, you're right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I have to. I have to. America is a Jesuit nation. 
not like in England, isn't there, old chap? But, uh, yeah. Yeah. People, they, they have a, the world has a reason to hate us. And once the male figurehead, smoking Joe, get out of the way, and they put, the Jesuits put these two um, sirens, these two witches, Kamala Harris, and Nancy Pelosi, it's the vice, wow. You know, Eric John Phelps, <laughs> I always used to think you were kind of crazy, thinking that one day uh, foreign uh, power is going to invade us. Looking really uh, probable right now. But see, now why can't these people teach anything? Okay? The Black Pope. I'm going to be reading some excerpts from this. The Black Pope. Okay? <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, get, uh, this is on page 72 and 73, okay? Going to be uh, reading uh, mostly the highlighted stuff. Go ahead and pause this and read it if you can. The highlighted stuff is what we're going to be looking at, okay? All right. Now keep this in mind when concerning the enemies, okay, who all they do is attack, okay. The object of persecution is persecution for these devils, okay. What, why is that, okay? On page 72 of the Black Pope, verbatim, the simple fact is that the Jesuit dare not educate. He does not because he is a Roman Catholic. Big smile, buddy. And Rome does not permit education in its highest sense. Still less can he educate as a Jesuit. Because the rule of his order is, if possible, still more opposed to the imparting of knowledge than the rule of any other teaching, order in the Church of Rome. Did you get that? Let's read that again. The simple fact is that the Jesuit dare not educate. More like an entertainer you are. He dare not because he is a Roman Catholic. You're a Roman Catholic! And Rome does not permit education in its highest sense. Still less can he educate as a Jesuit. Because the rule of his order is, if possible, still more opposed to the imparting of knowledge than the rule of any other teaching order in the Church of Rome. And then about these Jesuits, there's a comment on them where one says, I am amazed at the wonderful memory of the monitress who is examining. He had discovered early in the pro proceedings that the questions and answers which were supposed to be improv improvised at the moment were simply learned by heart. We're going to see that. Um, uh, some of the stuff by the Jesuits that they write are done in question and answer um, process. Like they propose a question and then they answer it. What does that do? That limits you in learning. Just like we kind of read in uh, 1984. They, they do question and answer, and that only, they're controlling how you learn. They control how you process thought. See? Very dangerous. But right here, check this out. <laughs> Thinking about my smiley friend from Canada. To the Jesuit, there is nothing which is not of faith. There can be no liberty of thought. Hence, there can be no intellectual liberty. How does it feel that to have someone think for you? You stinking Jesuit. Ugh. And by liberty we do not mean license. 
the Jesuit impresses on his pupils that there are certain fixed and immutable rules of liter literary and philosophical belief. Uh, beware lest anyone spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. <laughs> from which no departure is possible, and that it would be the height of presumption to form any independent personal opinion on any subject whatsoever. The Jesuit college is the grave of thought. Here, the high and glorious inspirations of youth are strangled at their birth. It is true that such inspirations are not always well founded, but if they are not permitted free course, how can youth learn wisdom by experience? At the first step to larger judgments, when the impressions of youth have been corrected by time and increase in knowledge, the frame of mind which would lead even to scientific discovery is sternly repressed. All books for study are religiously peptonized, controlled, changed. Kind of like what we just saw in uh, Orwell's 1984. Yeah. So that they may so that they may be assimilated without digestion. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There is no chance for expanding intellect. And see right there, you devils. You don't expand people's intellect by guiding them through the uh, scriptures because the Holy Ghost is not in you. Okay? The Holy Ghost in you as the church of the living God will prophesy unto the church through the scriptures. Okay? That's prophesying for today. These devils, there's no chance for an expanding of intellect. It's all memorization. I mean, that's it. There's, there's no expansion. For expansion is unnecessary when there is nothing more to be known. I'm saved just because I believe. Okay? Repentance is a work. Contrition is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Fear of the Lord is a work. Huh. Huh. Uh. Yeah, for expansion is unnecessary when there is nothing more to be known. The devils also believe and tremble. So I guess the devils are saved too, aren't they? Ridicule, the most potent factor in discouraging the young, <laughs> is freely used in any attempt at originality of thought is manifested is freely used if any attempt at originality of thought is manifested. Oh, you don't want to be like one of them, you know, who are backloading works into salvation. You don't want to be one of those types, right? <laughs> They're saved by their works. We're saved because we believe. It's just believe. Put this in context with what's today. We're doctors. We know what's good for you with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Have you been to school? Are you a doctor? Do you understand these things, huh? We're doctors. We've been trained by Jesuits. We know your body better than you do. Now, trust the CDC. They have your best intentions at heart. Yeah. Catholic disease creators. I don't think so. It is the business of the student to learn what is set before him and to believe in history and science as well as in religion what he is taught and nothing more. Not doing your own research. Look things up on your own. Do your own research. Do your own work. Do your own labor. No, you're just supposed to believe what your masters tell you and not think on your own. What the fathers do not teach him is either not worth knowing or dangerous. 
like the Catholics tell you not to read the scriptures because you'll le uh, be going into heresy. You need the fathers to teach you who don't even use the scriptures themselves. Huh, buddy? Yeah. And of course, what's the most dangerous book unto the Catholic? And even you Catholics, even you Catholics, and I know they have confirmed, what is the most hated book that's dangerous and not worth knowing to the Catholic? The authorized version of the scriptures. Why do you think these infiltrators who say they're kings and Bible believing Christians, but yet never quote anything, I mean, they don't teach anything from it? It's all sensationalism, emotionalism, philosophy. You know, those of you who are duped by these guys, two peas in a pod, you know, the fathers can write their history and philosophy so as to suit the views which they hold on these subjects. On these subjects. Oh, wait, wait, I skipped something, excuse me. All the books used in Jesuit colleges are prepared by the fathers. What does that mean? They're rewriting the history books. They're rewriting dictionaries. You can see it yourself. History has been rewritten by those who killed heroes. Vatican II, the Holocaust to St. Bartholomew, Bartholomew's Massacre, the Jesuits, Roman Catholicism is busy rewriting the history of the world. Why do you think when you hear about World War II, you don't hear anything about Hitler being a Catholic? No, nope. what do you hear? You hear that he was an atheist. No, Hitler was a Catholic. He molded uh, his uh, SS uh, after the uh, uh, principles of the Jesuits. You don't hear about that, do you? No. Why? Because the Catholics have rewritten the history books all over the world. What the fathers do not teach him is either not worth knowing or dangerous. All the books used in Jesuit colleges are prepared by the fathers. Well, that's just Jesuits. Uh, people, come on. The Jesuits here in America especially are in every single solitary school in America. From the little kids to the paid functionaries. Okay? There are two reasons for this. The fathers can write their history and philosophy so as to suit the views which they hold on these subjects. And they add very largely to their income by the sale of their own books. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see what else can we go. Okay. All right. Uh, let's let's read a little in this. Another serious disadvantage of Jesuit education is the u is the use which is made of Latin, which is not always classical, as a medium of instruction and communication. The Latin Vulgate. Okay. Latin is not merely the language of the church in an, ecclesiastic, in, a, in a ecclesiastical sense. It is also, with rare exceptions, the usual medium of ecclesiastical communication. All pronouncements are written in Latin. All communications with the Roman cura are written in Latin. I have heard it said that while Latin is one of the seven purifications of the word of God, that it went through, yes, but Latin seems to be the main language of the Roman Catholic Church. Hence, Latin is the language of the devil? Hey, now if your Latin is your tongue, okay, but we're dealing with facts here about Catholicism. And Catholicism is Satan's church, okay? The popes and the cardinals who reside in Rome, with very rare exceptions, do not understand any language but Italian 
and the English and other bishops, with rare exceptions, do not speak Italian. It is a curious fact that the men who dictate the policy and politics and license the books for foreign countries do not know one word of the language in which they are written. Hmm. It is still more curious that men of intelligence and education submit to the continuance of such a system, especially when they are not members of the church which pronounces its fiats on their public and private proceedings. Public and private proceedings. What does that translate to? Public and private education, which is in the hands of the Jesuit order. Your kids are being taught what? Edu uh, education, yeah, evolution. I've heard stories of um, uh, a, a dearly, dearly beloved sister of ours sent me some stuff about how um, first graders are being taught about sexual things. First graders. Yeah, such a godly nation is America. Yeah. The Jesuit, however, rarely attempts to teach science demonstrable, and provable, and observable. Masters are usually employed to teach the boys these departments, but all the same books used must have the Jesuit imprint, the mystic letters AMDG, Ad Majorium de Glorium. The Jesuits discourage the study of exact sciences, and not without reason. They fear that a mind trained to accept nothing which cannot be proved to demonstration may at last turn on the church and refuse to believe that it is not logically proved. Transubstantiation. You know, your little uh, way for God that you worship, okay? Which your priest says, abracadabra, hocus pocus, and turns it into the flesh, body, blood, whatever, not the blood, because you drink that in a cup, right? Yeah, 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 and you're supposed to believe that by faith. Just like you're supposed to believe by faith evolution, and just like you're supposed to believe by faith the psychological operation of the poison crown. The mathematician accustomed to accept nothing which is not proved and to discuss and weigh every argument may one day apply this method of analysis to religious questions which a result would be which a result with a result which would be fatal. The order has a, speci a specialist for each study who prepares the book on each subject. Ever wonder why there are all these specialists from medical to this and that? The object of persecution is persecution. One does not uh, set up a dictatorship to safeguard a revolution. No, uh, one has a revolution to set up a dictatorship. The only liberty which Rome allows to her children is the liberty to agree with her. And the liberty which she so loudly demands at the present day from the world at large is liberty to take away our liberty. Rome is the only religion in the world which asks, asks liberty in order to enforce restraint. Isn't that true? Think about that for today, people. Okay? You, you, you roll up your sleeve for the seal of the Jesuit poniard so you can what? Have your freedom. But then you got to get another one and another one. And now these continual booster shots? And those who have been come in contact with the steel of the Jesuit poniard, they're still recommending. And it's no guarantee that you won't get this fictitious poison crown? Hello? Is anyone? Hello? Hello? The only liberty which Rome allows to her children is the liberty to agree with her. 
you don't agree with me, that's fine. Go ahead. Go, go away. Do whatever you want to do. That's okay. Many people don't agree with me. I don't agree with many people. Okay? You, you know? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay? You want to you wanna believe your salvation is your salvation because you believe and you just received it like Abraham? Took me a while to figure you out, by the way. But I got you. Yeah, because you shot yourself in your own foot like they, you all do. But, uh, hey, you want to believe that stuff? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, up the dosage, man. Go ahead. Not the Catholic. Not the Jesuit. Your liberty is to agree with her or... And the liberty which she so loudly demands at the present day from the world at large is liberty to take away our liberty. All these restrictions placed on you for your own good is liberty to take away our liberty. Give unto the Jesuits the liberty to take away our freedom for the, for the common good because they know better. Right? Do you not see? Do you not see? It's the Jesuits who are in control of all this, people. Rome is the only religion in the world which asks liberty in order to re enforce restraint. <laughs> oh. Oh. But what else can be expected from men who at the most important period of their lives have been trained to think independent intellectual effort a sin? Unless indeed it is an intellectual effort to remember what they have been taught and to believe that all else is false and vain. To believe what they've been taught. Okay? Not to have to broaden their things. Like all you devils. You're just teaching a prepared program given to you by your Jesuit masters. That's why they can't teach anything in this. Because the Jesuits can't teach anything from this. This is God's book. The Bibles belong unto the Jesuits. This belongs unto God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What other juicy things can we give you here? <laughs> the Jesuit professor of history did not believe in the conversion of the world by peaceable means, but rather by the sword and the torture. Obviously. In this we find he ignored the fact that these bad Christians, bad Christians, they're Christians, remember, were devout Roman Catholics. And that's something. Bad Christians. They're Christians, but they were devout Roman Catholics. All right. Let's see. A man who is blind either by nature or from circumstances is scarcely the person to whom one would entrust the care of youth about to travel to a new country. It would not minimize the danger if the blind guide believed that he and he alone possessed sight. <laughs> Meaning the Jesuits. Uh, now because you think that you have sight, you are blind. If you were blind, then you would see. But now that you say that you see, you are blind. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that. Here's the last one that we are going to cover of this, okay? Uh, uh, oh, hold on. Oh, here, this is what I wanted to show you. Information was given in the form of question and answer, and the study either intentionally or otherwise was made uninteresting as possible. See, by just posing question and answer. There's a book I have called The Faith by the Jesuits, which is nothing but question and answer. 
A lot of the, some of these catechisms are done in question and answer. Why? That controls what you think and how you process it. Controlling you, see? See? The Jesuits' dream of a perfect college, says M. Gleese, is one where there would be a crowd of young men who would listen only to their masters, speak only to their masters, think only as their masters, and have no intercourse with their companions except such as should be altogether unavoidable. The control of the Jesuit order. These guys, these devils here on YouTube, they can't think for themselves. They're programmed. You can't think for yourself. What you're doing is provided for you by your father, the devil. You're following a script. That's why you can't teach anything from scripture. Because you're, you're not saved to begin with, but that's why. These men are robots, people. They're not men. There is one point on which the Jesuits deplore that their educational efforts have not the success which they deserved. Their pupils have no enthusiasm, either for the order or for the spread of the faith. And when you think about that, these people, they're more interested in attacking those who preach the truth, not seeking to spread the faith. Okay? That's all they're about. They may remain members of the church so far as to frequent the sacraments on stated occasions. To marry with the rites of the church. So a Jesuit could have a wife and children. Yeah. To attend Mass occasionally on Sundays. And to even and even to send their sons to Jesuit colleges. But here the matter ends. They are passive. And never become apostles. They may become opponents. But the Jesuit has only his own system of education to thank for this. They may become opponents. See, I'm still not going to play by your rules and name you, even though you like to name me. Because that's what you want. And I'm not going to give you what you want. This is why, people, this is why these people on YouTube and other platforms, this is why they cannot, um, this is why they cannot teach anything. Okay? Got to remember that. Now, um, I want to want to share this with you, okay? Uh, one second, I'm going to pause this. Okay. I've read this to you before, The Secret Plans of the Jesuits by Leone. This is the book that David Daniels was not mentioning to you, but quoting of it and not telling you where to get it or find it, okay? He might have, I don't know if he did. I, I watched one of these things and kind of was like, I don't, I don't want it. Anyway, here's what I'm reading you. Can you see that? The highlighted stuff. For I would not have it lost sight of that our chief concern must be to mold the people to our purposes. Doubtless, the first generation will not be wholly ours, but the second will nearly belong to us, and the third entirely. The third generation. Yeah. Yes, the people are the vast domain we have to conquer, and the harlot sits on all waters, which are people, in Revelation chapter 17. And when we are free to cultivate it after our own way, 
we will make it fruit, uh, fructify to the profit of the impervished granary of the holy city. We shall know how by marvelous stories of gor and gorgeous shows, full of sound of a fury, signifying nothing, to exercise heresy from the heads and hearts of the multitude. Oh, like brokenness, contrition, and uh, fear of the Lord, calling upon his name, which is scriptural repentance, scriptural salvation, scriptural fear, okay, sorrow, that kind of stuff, salvation. We shall know how to nail the thoughts upon ours, so that they shall make no stir without our good pleasures. Then the Bible, that serpent which, with head erect and eyes flashing fire, threatens us with its venom, whilst it trails along the ground, shall be changed again into a rod as soon as we are able to seize it. And what wounds will we not inflict with it upon these hardened pharaohs and their cunning magicians? What miracles will we not work by its means? Oh, then, mysterious rod, we will not again suffer thee to escape from our hands and fall to the earth. For ye know but too well that, for three centuries past, this cruel asp, talking about the scriptures, the authorized version, has left us no repose. You well know with what folds it intertwines us, and with, and with what fangs it gnaws us. And, they, and in this book, if you get it, um, you'll see that even the Jesuits, the Catholics, admit that, yeah, the scriptures are against their institution. Even their own Bibles are, people. But now, let's, let's finish this up. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. This, from where my finger is on this page, this is what I'm reading you next. And my, my dear um, Pucharist loving friend, you know, from Blackpool, hi, yeah. Um, you can go ahead and say I'm a Jesuit because I'm exposing your order. You can go right ahead. Um, Truth hurts you, doesn't it there, buddy? Yeah. Such is the model we place before the common people in our sermons and at the confession. And thus do we change them from raging lions into resigned and, into resigned and timid sheep. Besides all this, we dazzle them by the prodigious quantity of lives of saints which we set before their eyes. Uh, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing, teaching nothing of uh, importance, but giving, doing chaff and redirect. Okay? Saints who have been canonized, who are now resplendent with celestial glory, who have fasted and mortified themselves, voluntarily undergoing the most severe sufferings in order to gain a glorious seat in heaven. Yeah. Weigh all this well, and you will be prepared to acknowledge that the Roman Church alone is able to guarantee you against the principles of revolt. And they're the ones who are stoking it. That by such teachings as these, it can stifle and destroy them in their very germs. Ugh. Get a load of this. I'm talking about how history has been rewritten. And the Jesuits are robots that are only put in certain things that they can do. Okay? Yeah, they're brilliant men, but yet, what can they teach? Besides all this, we dazzle them by prodigious quantity of lives of saints which we set before their eyes. Sound and fury signifying nothing. What if we organized a special committee, committee to watch over the tendencies of the history and literature of the age? Books are being rewritten. Old speak is getting out of the way. New speak is coming. 
Encouragement might be uh, ardently, ardently given to any writer who would place a few flowers on the bust of one of one or other of our popes. Place a few flowers on some of the popes. Don't speak too bad about the Catholic Catholics. Yes, go ahead. Say things about them. Go ahead. Because remember, even the Jesuits will say things about their Jesuits. But you know what they won't do? They won't get into detail. They won't get into detail. That's why you attack this, you idiot. I'm referring to devils and lost people as idiots. Okay? Not those of the Church of the Living God. Okay? But that's why you attack this. That's why you attack this. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. Okay? Because you Jesuits, you're not all about details. You're, you keep very rigorous detail in, um, in infiltrating and gathering information on people. Like I've experienced with these coadjutors myself. Okay? They like to get every bit of information from you. Yes. But when it comes to speaking about their own order, uh, they don't get into detail. They kind of skimp on the detail. Okay? Encouragement might be ardently given to any writer who would place a few flowers on the bust of one of, uh, of one or other of our popes. Speak a little against it, but don't, don't deeply expose them. Don't expose it for Satan's church as it is. Yeah. Say good things about Constantine. About Constantine. Yeah. Or who might be disposed to defend certain parts of our institutions? Oh, like the, creed, the, the creeds of the Catholic Church. Right down the line, they're, they're spot on. Excuse me. Just a little gagging. Or, or our culminated religious practices. In time, we should see a great increase in the number of these apologies. You ever heard of apologetics? Yeah. Yeah. Why is it these emergent Christians are all about walking a labyrinth, wanting to be Buddhists, incorporating everything into it, and calling it blah? That's Christianity for you. Okay? And there is no doubt that a few writers of note were to open the way in this direction. Others would soon follow in their track without requiring either pay or prompting from us. And that's the scary thing. Because of what the Jesuits have done to the educational system and taken the scripture away from people and given them Bibles and have, um, uh, oh, uh, have given them Christianity, given them evolution, everything under heaven except the scriptures they don't even have to be some of these guys don't even have to be egged on by the uh, Jesuits they do it of their own accord that's scary if we could but operate a change in public opinion with respect to the history of the church right here he's talking about Vatican II that's a reference onto Vatican Council II. Smokescreen. Ecumenical smokescreen. We're separated brethren and working with other denominations to bring about accurate translation of the Bible. It's dogmas and ceremonies. So as to bring the people to regard these things with less repugnance how many obstacles would be thereby removed? We suffer rich benefices, benefices to be devoured by a host of Sabarites who do us more harm than good. Why should we regret a few sums expended for a purpose to eminently, so eminently useful? How many ruins might be repaired through the instrumentality of the multitude of young there you see again Jesuits going after the youth. Poetic enthusiasts or of those literary men who who, whose presumption or itch for novelty keeps them perpetually 
scribbling, novelty, novelty. This is all a joke to him. It's all a joke to him. I think this is funny. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big joke to y'all. That's why these people can't teach you anything. Uh, they are opponents, but nothing more. Any one of these guys, if so-so were to so order one of these guys to strap something on them and go kablooey in, on something, they would do it. They would do it. Because their free will has been taken out of them through the spiritual exercises. And you go in through the military in any way, shape, or form, you are exposed to a variant of the spiritual exercises. And I've known Marines who have even testified to such. You've been in the military. You've been exposed in some kind of a way to a flavor of Ignatius's spiritual exercises. Why is it a lot of the people I've encountered have military backgrounds? <laughs> Please consider these things, brethren. Please, people, consider these things. And you know, let let me let me finish with something. Psalm 133. Psalm 133. You know, if you're of the church and living God, you are my brother. I might not like you. I might vehemently disagree with things you are doing. As you may vehemently disagree with things I am doing. But if you are genuinely saved, born again, converted, a new creature of the church of the living God, you are my brother or my sister. I might not like you. You might not like me. But if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are my brother. You are my sister. And you know what? Just because you tell me you are, I'm not going to take your word for it. Okay? Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You know, because some, uh, because some people um, will fight, for, uh, fight to the death to defend a man. The church of the living God is fragmented, unfortunately. But see, here's a question I propose to you. How come, how come, those who are of lesser age in Christ can see things clearly, but when it comes to those who are of greater age of Christ, and very quick to rub it in your face, by the way, how come the, the babe can see something that the one who was of age can't? Do we not all have one spirit? Hmm? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. This was part of what I read this morning. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 19. And then we'll be done. Uh, no, we already read verses, um, let's read to verse 16. Therefore, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, 
with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. But what if the spirits are being contradictory? If we are saved of the Church of the Living God, we have one spirit, then, then what? Because remember people, these devils, they also have one spirit. And they are working more better in um, unity than some of us are as the Church of the Living God. That ought to make you sick to your stomach. That these devils are working together better than those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God. There is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. If you are saved, born again, converted, you are sealed unto that day of redemption. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you. The circumcision made without hands, that seal until the day of redemption. Okay? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Yes, some are babes. You're not going to understand everything. There are some up there who have, uh, not up there, but some down there who've been through things. Yes. But why are a lot of these people who are still yet babes can see obvious things? But those who are not, uh, who have been long down that path for a while, can't. You know, when people ask me, I, I say, please pray for humility. Because you know what, brethren? I struggle with pride. I really do. I make mistakes. I'm wrong. I do. I make mistakes. And my pride gets the better of me. My Lord answered prayer by giving me a heart condition, a thorn in my flesh. And when my pride gets the better of me, it, it flares up. I'm not going to use the example I used before. But it flares up. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to hold men greater than truth. I don't want that. I don't want to have to resort to worldly means to get your attention. I don't want to do that. I'm not here because I want to be. This is what the Lord wanted me to do. And yes, because I'm doing it His way, He's rewarded me. I'm serving the Lord according to the purpose He's called me to. But I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be... I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be arrogant. I don't want to be proud. I don't. And I struggle with it. I fight it. Daily. It's hard. It's really hard. But I don't want to be like one of these who have the mentality, well, I've paid my dues. I've been there, done that. I'm up here now, and I have no commonality, no, um, you know, relation. I can't relate with the people who are down here. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to be able to relate with the poor, with the lowly, with the meek, those of my brethren. I don't want to be one of those that are set over there because I paid my dues and been there, done that. I don't want to be like that. God help me if I, if I ever get to that point. And I hope I don't. Wherefore he saith, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. 
Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. We don't all have the same thing that we're doing. We have different functions within the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Okay? Some of you are not called to this. Some of you are called to online tracting. Praise the Lord for it. Some of you are called for tracting. Uh, standing on a street corner. Doing whatever. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying of the body of Christ. I see things that I that the Lord stirs to my attention. It's like, hey, you need to, you know, speak up on these things. And I do. And I do. I follow his lead. I'll take the consequences. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slay of men like Jesuits and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You know, like sleeper cells. People who will lie dormant, like the part of the uh, Jesuit order, these coadjutors, they will lie dormant for years, and then one day their masters will be like, hey, got a job for you. They'll spring up, and then all of a sudden they'll come online to YouTube and start going after one specific person. Gee. Oh, yeah, that's not Jesuit. <laughs> yeah. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. There is no infinitesimal work for the perfecting of the body of Christ. You might think yourself doing something infinitesimal, but there is nothing like that according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And we already read about uh, verses 17 and so on. You know, brethren, the redemption of the purchased possession, is it going to happen this year? I hope so. I am one of those that is under the impression that the catching away will happen during the springtime in accordance with uh, Song of Solomon uh, chapter 2. But the reality is at the, pl at the stage we are at now, it could come at any time. Let us be focused on doing the work of the Lord and fighting that. Because remember, Satan has many minions. Minions. And many people that he has planted. Mark these people and avoid them. But don't lose sight of what we are called to do. Because what does the devil like to do? Distract dazzle you full of sound and fury signifying nothing so it's going to be it for this video I hope this helps I hope this uh, I hope this the Lord do with this ever, whatever he will thank you brother church of the living God I love you we love you thank you and even to you my enemies if you make it this far and there are some of you who will I do really pity you I do 
I really do. I truly don't hate you because I'm warned in the scriptures that when calamity comes upon you, I'm not to rejoice upon you, uh, you getting calamity like you rejoice upon us. Um, because if we do, it'll displease our Lord and he'll turn away from it because we're behaving like you do. What would, what would it be like if just one of you would turn on your order and be the next Alberto Rivera? Could that be you, Smiley? I know it ain't your brother from England. That ain't going to happen. Hmm. Would be nice, wouldn't it? And hey, I'll tell you. If something like that happens, and you turn on your Jesuit order, and you want to spill your guts publicly... Get into detail? Let me know. We'll have a live stream. Again, I offer that to you. So, that's going to be it for this video. See you in the next one, Lord willing.